Well, the government is targeting the technical education and vocational training to address the job skills issue that continues to haunt the Kenyan job market, as well as increase enrollment to about 20% by the year 2030. That was before coronavirus. And the question is, how will the pandemic impact TVET in the country, and what is the way forward? Joining us on Inside Government is Chief Administrative Officers, or Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Zach Kenodia. Thank you so very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, help me understand this. I mean, before coronavirus, you know, every plan was going according to the script. You know, the enrollment numbers, you know, were rising. Funding to TV was seeing an increase of about 5% uh, every year. Mm -hmm. But now here we are mm. in a situation whereby students are not going to class. Mm. The issues of social distancing as well, you know, must be adhered to. Mm -hmm. How have TVETs been impacted by coronavirus? Uh, thank you. TVET uh, has been affected the same way basic uh, university education has been affected be, be, because its main client have been uh, grounded Th that is students so without students then there is no content <coughs> de delivery because uh, our trainers are uh, standby they have been uh, with us and, and i mean we continue paying them just to keep them uh, afloat but students have been forced to be home by the directive of the government to close all the schools so that means uh, all the machinery in these institutions, the construction of this institution, the completion, you know, the, the continued equipping have been going on. Only two things have stopped. One, the attendance of the students, and second, the capitation the, from government. Mm -hmm. What we send to these schools was withheld because we said to the head, one shilling, one head. But now these heads are off. So we have withheld the money. Mm -hmm. That is how TVET has been affected because operations are off, uh, examinations are off, practical and industrial linkages off. So it has stopped just like the others. But I hope uh, we are going to to resume soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and soon, I mean, we have seen uh, you know the education cabinet secretary uh, insinuating that um, you know they are likely to go back to class you know sometimes in September, and so, which is about two months from now. When you look at the laid down guidelines by the Ministry of Health, mm. you know, for institutions of higher learning mm. to resume classes, mm. are you convinced that TVET can resume classes by I'm, September? Yes, thank you. I'm convinced eh, that uh, all our technical training institutes, all our national polytechnics, and all the vocational education centers can resume. And my conviction is based on statistics, is based on facts. And the rationale of the Ministry of Health protocols guided by WHO. And this is why. The basic reason why TVET, which is tertiary education, was allowed by His Excellency the President to continue and open as from September. By the way, they are not opening in September. They are opening as from September. Because many of them are not ready. And we will not allow the reopening and resumption of work for colleges and institutions that will not have fulfilled these health concerns, uh, we are calling them uh, Ministry of Health guidelines. This is because their formula of operation is easy, that their calendar is not uniform. Unlike basic education, pre-primary, primary, and the secondary education, it's uniform. The year of uh, operation, uniform exams, uniform teaching mode, uniform assessment, uniform. But for tertiary education, it is not uniform. And that is the greatest strength upon which we underpinned the return to, 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 to normalcy. Mm -hmm. Why is this so? Because all the colleges, all the universities have their year of operation, admission, assessment, uh, you know, uh, assessing uh, their practical skills, mapped up by their board of operation. Could be Senate, could be councils, could be board of management. Mm -hmm. So for TVET, they will only be allowed to return, as the CS has insisted, once they fulfill in writing and upon our inspection, mm -hmm. the guidelines. And these are easy one. Every institution must have clean, flowing, reliable source of water. That one, we are not compromising. Mm -hmm. Besides that, water must be put at strategic places within the college. That is in the classrooms, 
for those that are, that have boarding facility near boarding facilities and inside and then at the gate that one for water there is no compromise we continue to insist for sanitization purposes it must be non-contacting so they must get gadgets that are non-contacting if you want to dispense soap that is detergent you don't touch anything you just press on your feet and then for water you press on your feet to have uh, yourself avoid this uh, multiple touching of the source of uh, opening water this one by the way for me to report to you for our Tibet institutions an overwhelming majority of them can produce them so the, uh, there's no question of even buying mm -hmm. All our national polytechnics, 11 in number, and they have, we have seen them. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, have a sample uh, that I got from Mary University. They are making them. Many uh, universities are using their departments of engineering mm -hmm. to produce them. So that's not a challenge. It's right? not a challenge. Mm -hmm. The issue of social distancing. Is the, animal in the, is the elephant in the room? I don't know how we are going to get this elephant out of the, of the room because first, think about tuition area and then think about boarding area. And this is what we have said. Every class will have two learners at a distance of 1.5 meters while sitting down from middle of the head mm -hmm. to the middle of the head, not desks. Mm -hmm. Middle of the head to the other middle of the head. Mm -hmm. That means every student must be separated from, the, from his or her colleague at a meter and a half. This one we have inspected, and we will continue inspecting. Once we are satisfied as a ministry that they can resume, it will be the responsibility now of the managers of these institutions to maintain the status quo, as we will have left it at that time. For boarding facilities, it will be a bed must be separated equally mm -hmm. at a distance of 1.5. Mm -hmm. But remember, many of these beds are double-deckers. Actually, in high school, I have had some are triple-deckers. But for our institution of higher learning, including where I went to school, University of Nairobi, it is double decas. So this is it. Per one bed, or rather one decker, which has a both, both cannot be used. You choose, you choose the upper decker, then the lower decker ha ha have to be sacrificed. You choose the lower, mm -hmm. then you cancel the upper. That means the next set of bed, if the, ch if, if, if the learner was sleeping uh, in the lower decker, mm -hmm. then the next... The, the, the learner must, can only sleep at the upper decker. And then it, it, it is zigzagged in that form. If you are sleeping lower, mm -hmm. the other one will be upper, up, then yeah. upper, lower, then mm -hmm. lower, upper. This way, we will minimize, even in the unlikely event that one will sneeze, mm -hmm. we will, uh, it will ensure that these droplets do not have enough time within 1.5 meters to get to you. So that even if they were to sneeze high, mm -hmm. it will be longer before they can get to the lower uh, lower deck. But and it is, it, it is in, I, I would say, this is the most painful area because you have to sacrifice students. But Zach, you know, mm -hmm. w w when you look at our institutions of yes. higher learning, yes, there were definitely the space was absolutely not made for this kind of social distancing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And when you look at the over 1,500 vocational training centers. Vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the number of students in these institutions, mm -hmm. it is clearly evident that uh, you know these kind of measures yes. are not likely to work. Mm -hmm. So, are we winking in dark? I would say the name we called this kind of uh, reopening is fist. We are opening in faces. Mm. It is not possible to do what we are doing under the circumstances we are in and achieve the same result we used to. So if these TVET institutions were chucking out, you could say 10,000 10, students per year, then it is not going to be possible. It is 5,000. What will happen to the, to the other 5,000? They will wait for another year to graduate. But, but this will be done in a manner that it doesn't inconvenience uh, people. So if you, if you came for a semester again and then you finish the year, you will come for a semester, go home, wait for the others to come in that semester, and then they will go home and then you return, and your year will be finished. This, it is faced. Every Senate and every council has been empowered to sit down and come up with modalities that guarantees equity, yet delays all. It is a delay by will. You will accept to be delayed, yes, but we have no other option. Because if you bring everybody back, then it is not possible to maintain the health as is required by the health ministry. But if 
we are able to open feasibly, then we are going to guarantee some form of progress, but not as quickly as we would want. This is a challenge of the time, and you called it well. This is an elephant in the room. We don't know how it got in the room, and we have to demolish the wall to get it off. But we do not want to do it. So why don't we thin the elephant and get it off the door in the end? This is what we are trying to do. It is not the best, it is not the most effective, but it is the only option that the government has now to ensure there is some form of normalcy, that we do not crash down all institutions of higher learning. So I would want to say students will be the greatest uh, victims of this pandemic. All of us, from primary, you can see others lost a whole year. At least basic education have lost a year. We are not even discussing that. Universities must as much be willing to give way because we will not return all of them at the same time. TVET institutions, the same. We will not return everybody. And how does this impact a student academic year? Delay. That is, that, that, that's the only impact. You'll be delayed. You'll not be denied, but you'll be delayed. What about the cost? Well, I would say the cost... We, we looked at it, uh, at it as a ministry and said financial cost has not been disrupted because you will not pay for a year you never attended school. You will only pay for the time you go to school. But now, in terms of graduation year, you know, the plans you had, you want to do this after graduation, this one will, will definitely be affected. People will not finish the time they wanted to. But those that are able to finish will return, do exams, and then they will be given their certificates. Graduation ceremony has been allowed to be, graduation ceremonies have been allowed to be virtual. Universities can conduct virtual graduation mm -hmm. as long as you guarantee offering of certificates to this student. It's been allowed. Anyway, it is abnormal times. That's why we are applying abnormal strategies just to keep us going because we can't grind the whole country. We can't grind the whole education uh, infrastructure. Something must be, you know, something must be given, which is less risky, risky, maybe to, well, the political stability, you know, I, I would have to say it that way. Because if we close down everything, then it would seem like uh, other countries are giving the disconnected stories of what they are doing. But ours seem like we are, not, we are doing nothing. So we have to keep going and keep learning and keep listening and keep adjusting until we can get something that all of us can agree with. I mean, this, this, this crisis, you know, cannot be blamed on students. Mm, mm. It cannot be blamed on uh, 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 parents. Yes. It cannot be blamed on teachers. Yes. But somehow, some form of blame can be apportioned to the government mm -hmm. for not expanding the, our, our educational infrastructures. And that's why we are finding ourselves in such a bigger crisis, you know, that than other developed economies, you know, like South Korea, you know, and Norway and so much. So uh, if my academic year is delayed, how then do you cushion the parents or guardians and students from incurring extra expenditure in school? One, the government has been operating on an overdrive as far as expanding learning institution is concerned. As far as funding public uh, institutions that offer education is concerned, the government has been on overdrive. No other government in the, in the post-independence Kenya has invested so much in the education institutions. But a lot of investment has been going towards, you know, ensuring enrollment. Enrollment and also infrastructure. So infrastructure has been, actually there is a vote today but, but when you look at, you know, the percentage-wise in terms of enrolment vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis, uh, per percentage-wise in terms of infrastructural mm -hmm. expansion, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the equilibrium is heavily yeah, tilted yeah. towards, uh, towards enrollment. enrollment. And yeah. for a simple reason, because now government, by the advice of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, which has made education a constitutional entitlement, basic education is now constitutional. It is not a question of whether you want to attain from four certificates, as, as it is now. It is a question of law. It is a must for you to. It is a constitutional it, right. Yeah, so everybody is now being flushed out from homes. Mm. Not that uh, children are lesser than they are now, but people are not going to school in the accelerated form as it is now. Remember, it is now that we are implementing what we are calling 100% transition. Everybody must go to school after, 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 after class 8, assuming that everybody now 
FPE having been in operation for the longest time, now going to secondary school is also now mandatory because it is now free day secondary school. Mm. Chiefs and public administration, uh, provincial administration so-called, has been flashing students out of homes. No. Go, go to school. So mm. enrollment was bound to increase. But at the backdrop of this, the government is strategically looking forward decided to start now upgrading and advancing and expanding infrastructure to fit, you know, uh, the projected high rise of numbers in the, of students in the coming days. And this is what has been happening. All secondary schools have a direct vote of money that we release from here that goes straight into expanding classrooms, laboratories, ablution blocks. Th that money must go into that only. Leave, if we send one million to every school for that purpose, it cannot be used for anything else except for development. So build classes. Our development partners, uh, especially the World Bank, has been putting money on infrastructure because enrollment, us, we, we, can, uh, we can manage as a government. But we need even friends and goodwill. You know, budget is uh, shrinking. But we need people to bring us closer to giving us infrastructure that can feed our children. So to come to your earlier point, the government cannot be blamed for this pandemic it could be blamed perhaps for a uh, slowed progress of advancement mm. in terms of structures and enrollment before, not now. Mm. This pandemic has disrupted even the most progressive uh, democracies, as you have mentioned. Remember, South Korea returned children to school after 17 days, closed down all the schools because of infections. Uh, they realized the more you bring children together, it is not easy to, mean to keep them off from social distancing. 60, I think there were 68 succumbed into infection, not dying. Then closed school, Germany, the same. And you know, these are people who can learn even at home. But the model of learning in the 21st century has not been developed to fit virtual learning. We, we are used to four walls and a roof. Mm. That is a form, that is when environment, that's the best environment that guarantees at most learning for children. So what the government is doing can be commended. The loss of years, the loss of uh, uh, time, the loss of money cannot be blamed squarely on government because everybody can see that this one was a pandemic that nobody was ready for. If it was hunger mm -hmm. or, or, or thirst, we could say our African governments uh, are as they are called. They are ineffective, they are carers, <laughs> they are whatever. But now, even the most advanced, mm -hmm. look at what Trump is doing. He, ca he cannot know whether to sue uh, uh, you know, the districts, mayors, or what to do with the schooling. When we moved from analog to digital, we took the opportunity to share our talanta. And the rise of local radio represented our voices in turn. And now, in these difficult times, free educational shows are helping our children learn from home. And new ICT and educational platforms are going to make sure that no one is left behind. Mawasiliano Kwetu, Nguvu Kwako, the Communications Authority of Kenya, opening your world. Every year, Northern Nomadic Disability Organization has had activities lined up as a way of creating disability awareness in the pastoralist community. Unfortunately, Things are no longer the same with COVID-19 in the picture. He has been forced to find alternative ways to continue communicating and serving his community in the face of coronavirus. Differently abled, differently. This weekend on KBC Channel One. Me, me see mutoto. Me see mutoto. You know very well that was my idea, and you ended up taking it. You have a lot of explaining to do. But I'm Julia. Can you guys believe that he was hooking me up with his father? He is not my father. Aye. Can we move on to a more valuable topic? This John. Oh, John. She's. Can you not talk to me, please? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that uh, you can give me that better, you know I can uh, do others.
you know, yeah. the United States and other bag of chips all together. Mm -hmm. But I mean, let's stick with the with the South Korean model. I yes. mean, you know, students there they have lost about on average 15 days of of of, of classes. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, mm -hmm. they're going to lose about almost 200 days of classes. Yeah. Yeah, but, but South so Korea, clearly you cannot compare the two. But, but, but again, when you say South Korea has lost 15 days, that would mean uh, there was a time they were going to school before they closed, or that means there was a time they would be going to school. No, no, since the pandemic. They, since the pandemic. On, on average. Mm. And how many, how many are their days? You could tell, because some of these models of learning are different. Our, our system, we are changing it. And it will not be hours oriented. It will be action oriented. Mm. So hours of class are likely to be less than than they are now you know for you and i the system we went through is about pumping in the head of a child as much learning with as least time as possible so that means we end up with aggregated time mm -hmm. which keeps us to school more even after the government sanctioned time that's why we, we had tuitions that's why we had to go for weekend many things so if we lose 200 days uh O'Brien, and i tell you if we lose 200 days it would be better even if there were 300 days to be lost than losing a child. And that is why, that was a, that was a foundation upon which we decided, please let's, let's forget that there was 2020 in the calendar of the uh, academy and get 2019 and 2021. If our children will ever question us of what happened to 2020, we will say it was eaten by dogs. <laughs> that year was never available. Because as you, as, you, as, you, as you can see, nobody can be able to guarantee life. The president gave us clear instruction. Whatever you do, that committee, ensure you do not risk the children's lives. And he told us he was voted for many reasons. But primarily, as a democratic government, his is to protect lives and property. In this case, he's protecting the lives of the children. So we said whatever we do, we wanted to bring children back. And South Korea and Norway provided us with two scenarios of return, test, let's see how it goes. We realized under the current situation, if we return in September, which is our peak, uh, projected peak time for COVID, on average, because children are more strong, they have better immunity to deal with this disease. On average, there could be in 1,000, two children succumbing to death, just two, which is a very insignificant number. So the people who are in the room were asked, who will choose to be the mother or the father of these two children? If we get to which child to die, in these two out of a thousand, two will die. Which two? Because two will die, yes. But if these two are to die, who will choose to be the parent? That this was your child who has died out of one thousand. Everybody left the room. Nobody was going to accept to be the mother or the father of this succumbing child. So we said, then one, is not, one child cannot die. We can't afford even death of one child. Mm. These children, again, with infections, will go home and hug their parents and their grandparents, exposing them to the extreme risk of this disease. So closing was not about children getting, you know, getting infected or dying. It was as much also. Where are they going after school? They are going home, where they are going to get their kinsmen. What if Sorry. they kill them? I mean, it has been increasing at a very significant uh, 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 rate. What happens in a situation yes. whereby infection rate continues to mm. climb mm even as we get to September, mm. October, and even November? Mm. I would say the only, the only reason that can explain why we have surging infections is the fact that testing is now being broad-based. So much, so much testing is done. That is why we are getting many, many... It is estimated there are as many infected people as testings can be done. That, 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 is, that is estimated all over the world, including uh, those that are testing more than we are doing. So for T Tibet and universities and teachers training colleges, these are adults or semi-adults. And we have said it is easier for them to adhere to the laid out protocols that keeps them off from infection than it is for others. So let's discuss here. Once these colleges and universities have complied with the Ministry of Health protocols, it is assumed from us that they are going to maintain these guidelines to keep them away from infections. If they don't, we can as much close and say every sector stands suspended. 
But we do not want to do that. The assumption that the president also opened the economy was based on that fact and saying, you, you people are mature. Let me open Nairobi, come in and get out. But take responsibility because you are mature. And you can see Kenyans are increasingly, especially those that are near Nairobi, taking personal responsibility. And that is why before you came in, you had a mask. I had my own. After this interview, we returned them. Everybody is being sanitized across here. Wherever you go, even in your place of work, everybody is being sanitized. And it is simply because now as an adult, it is upon me. If I get sick, it will be, it, it will be upon myself and my people. And the government will not stop. So for Tibet students and university higher education, it is our plea based on rationality that we can allow you to do it, please, so that also your lives can move on. But do the simple thing from the government point of uh, appeal, do the simple thing and sanitize, wear the mask, take care. If you have nothing to do in class, don't go to school. If you have a class, maintain your time within that class time and go after class. Take care of yourself because this thing can bring us a havoc, especially medical havoc in this country. And that's why the government, again, through the president, has convened a extraordinary session for governors to ask them, how are you talking to your people to take care? Because we cannot see a return of lockdown. The, the, the country is already ailing from economic uh, squeezing. Let us just do something from Tibet, from polytechnics, from uh, teachers training colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. Maintain the list of all these protocols and you will operate. You know, you know the death rate for corona is not as high as, in, uh, as other diseases. But now we do not know what to do in case there is an mass infection and pandemonium among its populations. That's why we're saying, even if corona is there, everybody knows it is in the, in, in the streets now. But don't expose yourself carelessly because you do not know what to do if you outnumber the facilities that government has already put in place. You know, as we wind up, yes. I want you to paint for us you know, a picture of how learning will resume starting from September. For Tibet and higher yes. education, eh? mm. this is how it is. First of all, we have had sittings with the principals of these institutions and the vice chancellors have met in their own rights and uh, under us. And we have asked them to simulate to us, how are we going to resume? Suppose you have fulfilled all the protocols of health. Then they say, that question is uh, self-explanatory. Because the way we are doing for 1,000 is what we will do for 10,000, is what we will do for 500. When the children are back to class, or rather the learners are back to class, our trainers, our lecturers are ready. And we will continue dispensing from where we left. They have reorganized the curricular delivery. They have reorganized the mode of delivering, which is, uh, you know, remains now for those classes that will be social distanced. They, they, they have come up with way of, uh, what, what do you say, of uh, increasing, in, in, in increasing, increasing the voice and reducing interaction. There's no need of going to students to see what they are doing. As long as there can be a projector, every student can be required to make just something out of it. The teachers and the school can provide means of casting assignments, if any. The lecturers just come, deliver content, send them to the laboratories under strict guidelines so that they do not also gather in, and, and get, get themselves crowded. The simulation was done by universities and it was agreeable to us. Uh, it was done by TVET because TVET, as you know, is more skill. It is not more of theory. It is more of skill. If you are learning how to make, uh, uh, how to lay pipes as a plumber, once you are through with the theory, which is very little amount of learning, then you go to it. We have told them to stagger these kind of practicals and sanitize the materials of practicals. And that, that one, uh, we will hold directly the managers of these institutions and the trainers. So the learning will continue as it used to. This time, with more space, you know, now because of social distancing, with the concentrated effort on defeating infections among us, the students, teacher, student, 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 and again, student, teachers, because student could as much carry the disease to the teacher. Very well. Teachers will be tested. Mm -hmm. That I need to tell you. Or, or the, the, learner, the, the trainers will be tested. 
lecturers will be tested, and these are responsibilities. When, when responsibilities. will they are when, when they are testing starts? No, no, no that, that that one we have allowed councils and boards of management to lie us with the local health oper uh, operators to ensure. Have you they, given them them timelines? No, we, we have we have we have told them their timelines is as of when they will resume. If your college is ready for resumption on 15th of September, then we accept we expect within that time the learners. Uh, we, the, the trainers will have been tested. If we say it is first of first of September, like some which are ready, the 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 lecturers will be tested around 17th. So yeah, I mean just to get the results. It is about now the responsibility of board of management, councils, and senates to ensure that every thing that facilitates return to school to normalcy mm -hmm. will be done. It is upon them, but it's we will be them. giving an oversight as a ministry to ensure our learners are not exposed to the risk of infections. Zach, Asante Sana for your time. Thank you, Brian. It Thank is you my very pleasure. much. Very well. Asante Sana. Zach Kinodi is the Chief Administrative Officer or Secretary at the Ministry of uh, Education joining us tonight mm -hmm. to give us a preview of how learning will resume starting this September for tertiary institutions, you know, like technical training institutes and universities and you have heard it actually from him it's not going to be a walk in the park but definitely it has to be done you have been watching inside the government my name is o'brien kimani thank you for your time we'll see you again on that day good night